That's right. This is the United States of Phil. I am the supreme being. I make the rules and what I say goes. Good evening, agents. So normally I post these agent updates on uh, Tuesdays, but I needed a little bit more time. The feeling wasn't right for uh, the topic at hand. So I, I waited and I thought about it and, and really kind of tried to look into it even more. And, and I think I've got a good grasp on it. So over here in the uh, Pacific Northwest, there uh, has been a couple clashes between two political groups that just have a dislike for each other in the city of Portland. So tonight I was going to go ahead and give my take on things and, and take a look at the groups, take a look at the venue itself, why Portland is important in this situation and what it kind of all means to me at least and how I view it. And then we wanted to go ahead and just kind of wrap it up, tie it all together, and we'll give you a brief update on what's happening here at the DIA with this coming week. So let's start with uh, the first group, Antifa. So they're a far-left group who oppose fascism in the opposite side of the political scale. So you're talking just don't like anything to the right at all. And, and the weird thing about them is that anything a, a little bit right of where their stance is, it, you're not with them anymore. You're, you're against what they want and what they stand for. At least that's my take on things. But we, we need to look into what fascism is and kind of where it comes from. So fascism is defined as well it's a total dictatorial control state so you're talking the leader has control over everything and they forcibly suppress the opposition as well as they have a strong control over their economy in the society as a whole so they control your media what you see what you hear how you see things think of things you know how you talk about things too huh and and to go ahead and look at examples of fascism well go ahead and look at italy post world war one into world war two Th that was a fascist state they controlled everything there and you know people were getting locked up for things that they're saying I, and for another example just go look at a dsp stream because he's pretty fascist with how he runs his stream as you heard in the quote to the opener of the video, um, it's the United States of Phil. And he has supreme control, and he seems to censor anything against his thoughts, and he controls how people view his economy. And then he also goes ahead and suppresses stuff. And he controls his society, too, of, you know, handicapped fans. That's That's kind of how I see it at times, so you know that's a that's a nice approach but personally i don't see fascism working very well in today's modern era because of how connected we are together as people i mean we're talking across the globe via the internet all the time ideas can be shared and that's a great thing but with a fascist state too bad you can't see that. That page is banned. Can't read it. To you know, can't see that video. Nope. That that thing didn't exist. Sorry. You know, nothing I could do. But you can't have control like that anymore. You can't block things in the internet age. And you know, it, a stricter economy can do certain things for you, but the ideas of fascism kind of just fall apart and they don't really stand very well right now so now let's turn our attention over to their antifa's opposing group um and that would be the proud boys with their lovely uh rooster flag right here and 
they just don't like Antifa. They are a right leaning group of men. They're all men. No, no, no ladies allowed in that group who uh, are mostly white. And they uh, are looking to go ahead and hold on to Western values. They fear that the idea of manhood is dying. And it's under attack every day. They also see the white male being, you know, attacked all the time now. Now, mo most people would go ahead and push that idea into the, the category of being racist and white supremacist. And it, it's a strange line there. There's a big gray area. You, you should be proud of who you are overall and where your family has come from. And, you know, maybe somebody in the past didn't go ahead and do anything fantastic. But, you know, maybe they were, you know, say racist or who, whatever. That, but that's way in the past. That's, that's not who you are now. And, but, but sadly, at this day and age, people still judge other people by the color of their skin. And it, it, it's a rough one. And I, I wouldn't know how it feels to be judged that way. But the, the thing is that I, I personally don't see the color of people's skins. I, I go ahead and treat people. It, it's A or B for me. Are you an asshole like me? And like to make fun of stupid shit on the internet? Or are you going to go ahead and be somebody else? Like like a DSP, like a piece of shit. That, that's it. Either you're a piece of shit or you're not. That's all I really care about. So, to continue down this line, um, these groups don't like each other. And it's obvious. And they tend to meet up in major cities in different events and they they clash they've been clashing for a while now it, it's supposed to be peaceful protests but the thing is that the proud boys are not afraid to go ahead and get violent if necessary and th that's what they've stated they they don't mind beating the shit out of you if if you lay hands on them or do something that they really didn't like now antifa they're becoming a little more aggressive these days. They started out fine. Wanted to go ahead and have their voices heard. And they wanted to be louder than everybody else. And they wanted to make an impact. And they were doing that. And then people started to vandalize property. And people started to misbehave and just be dickheads. And then eventually started to clash with the Proud Boys. Proud Boys showed up ready for a fight. Keep that in mind. It wasn't like they were showing up in, in suits and ties and standing there acting like responsible gentlemen and growing ass men. No, they'd show up dressed to beat the shit out of you. Like, you know, a gang in the movies Warriors. You know, they were ready to just baseball bat it up if they needed to. And they they do have quite a bit of uh, discretion. I I rarely see in any of these clips on Twitter or YouTube or anything along those lines where the Proud Boys are the aggressors. Yes, I've seen those clips and it does happen, but a few few guys, you know, can fuck it up for everybody as it goes for any group, you know. One streamer goes ahead and gets into an RV and does some, you know, illicit activities in the back room. And then now all RV streamers are garbage and they shouldn't exist. You know, but maybe there's a cool guy out there doing adventures and talking to people. And he gets in trouble for that? Yeah, that that's kind of what this is. But to continue, um, Antifa has done some weird stuff towards the Proud Boys. For, you know, because they're mad at them. They don't like their ideals at all. And they don't want them there. And it irritates them and it triggers them. So I've heard of bottles of piss, which is, you know, who knows if it's tainted with anything. I don't know where your piss is. It's a biohazard. You know, people have been maced now, you know, with some OC spray 
that that always feels fantastic. Trust me. That one that one's worse than getting tased. But people have been knocked unconscious. Bricks have been used. Hammers have been swung. These people are pretty much going to war every time they meet up. It's a street fight. For for what, though? See, the, these are their political views. And it's getting dangerous to talk about stuff like this. For some reason, because people are so into the tribe that they f fit best. Tribalism right now is just crazy. I mean... I like my first person shooter. There's my tribe there in video games. I enjoy what, you know, I'm a fan of the San Jose Sharks. That's my tribe there. I like the San Francisco 49ers. That's my tribe there. Oh, I like, you know, I, I enjoy the Seattle Supersonics when they were around. That was my jam. You know, you fit into your little tribe and people get so into it that they want to go ahead and, you know, not hear anybody else's opinion. And, and that's where most people have issues. I mean, look at DSP. He has this hug box that he stays in and he hides in it all day. And it's, it's going to run him now. It's dying slowly as we speak right now. His pay piggies aren't coughing up the big bucks anymore. Yeah, there's a couple of those wheelchair guys rolling around trying to keep the pig afloat and stick it to the detractors, man. But it, it's dying too. So these political views are having control over what we see now. People want a safe place to stream and you can't say what you want to say in your videos. Or you get demonetized or your video gets blocked. Things along those lines. And it's tough to speak your mind now. And it's important to, to me at least, and, and I implore you guys out there to go ahead and think about it too. It doesn't matter where you align yourself on that political scale at all. It really just matters if you can mind your fucking business. Like, I don't care what you do inside your own house and how you behave outside of the professional world. It, that doesn't matter. Go smoke an eighth of weed every night if that makes you happy. Drown in a 30-pack if you enjoy it. Drink a couple gins and sprites. That's fine by me. You know, like good old DSP does. We've seen... That's why he's having those late nights now, by the way. It's not Jasper waking him up. Unless he was drinking Jasper gin. But you need to stick to what you believe in. And just let other people be other people unless if they are causing harm to someone else because that that just doesn't fly with me you know it's it's just that's the hard line don't hurt your pets like all these twitch streamers seem to be doing now you know i saw another guy push his dog and stuff like that what, are you kidding me stop it you you're caring for another being they should be your everything doesn't matter can't hit something else just because it made you mad so we need to focus in on this venue too by the way why are they always having their biggest moments in portland why is portland oregon such a hot spot in this political climate right now well if you think about it you've got kind of this bay area of california on down to la that whole southern kind of side and then you have northern california which past the bay area gets kind of rural there's farmers out there there's you know log cutting of timber industries things like that up there you, you know that that kind of stuff they don't really fit in same with people into southern and eastern oregon they they kind of stay together. That's their community. They're all kind of farmers, hardworking people, you know, lumberjacks, timbermen, you know, whatever you want to call them, the loggers. They all make a hard living. They do it well. But they don't feel represented in their own state anymore. They, they don't have the same point of views. They're, they're more populated areas like portland like san francisco and la 
they both they all of those cities control everything that goes on in the Pacific Northwest. That in Seattle has influence as well. But they're more liberal leaning cities. And that's not a bad thing. Usually that tends to happen when you get a lot of people together. They kind of want to be left to do what they want to do. And that's the more liberal idea. But the other people, they're they're more conservative. They need to hold on to things. They need to control it and rein things back. And it's not a bad thing, you know. You want to keep what you've earned and try to help out where you can and where you want to, but you don't want to be made to pay for it. You know, I've been talking to somebody that I work with, and he was like, I, I'm fine with people on welfare that need help, but I'm not fine for, you know, some lady on welfare with seven kids who doesn't need to take a drug test to get a welfare check. I gotta agree with the guy. That's that's a rough one when you have to get a drug test just to get employed these days. You know, I, I'd rather not have those kind of things. They're, they're just something you hold over your employees' heads so you get to tell them what they do in their time away from work. You know, everybody should act professional when you're at work. Do your job. Don't be a DSP. Don't be somebody who, like a thought. Do your job professionally. Do it as best as you can and try to do it better every day. You, you'll go far with that kind of work ethic. The moment you kind of lax there, that's when you kind of have to dial it back. But sometimes you get burnt out. I get it. But the thing is that Portland is sandwiched. It's kind of all sandwiched in together, and, and it's a hot spot. You've got all of this, the state of Jefferson, if you will, if it was actually became a state, would, would encompass a decent chunk of people who want things to just be left alone. I don't care what you do. Just don't don't make me do all the hard work here. That's kind of what they want. So the, these Proud Boys come here and try to back up their stance, and then Antifa comes in and they don't like everything. They protest it. They yell and scream and do these heinous things, which now it's both sides, and they're both at fault. And people want to label them as terrorist groups or a gang. And it, it's getting ridiculous. And as we slowly go towards the 2020 election, you're going to see stuff ramp up. You're going to see all sorts of crazy shit going on there. So I want you to keep it in mind, agents, that what, what you're seeing out there in this clown world and kind of frame it back in and take everything in. In, in take a moment that's that's the key to this that's why i took an extra day to kind of figure out where i wanted to try to go with this i know i ranted on i know i talked some nonsense probably in there but i just wanted it to flow today and thank you for being here this week at the dia we've got um hopefully we're gonna go ahead and do a uh, live investigation I don't know what we're going to investigate yet, but I think I'm leaning towards staycations or um, mystery illnesses because he's he's been sick or claimed he's been sick a couple times. Maybe we'll look into some of those. But yeah, no game, no gaming stream this week. I, I know already that I'm going to have to go into work on Friday. Guaranteed. And that's a good thing. I like overtime. I like my... Uh, Steady income. I know how it feels. It makes this hobby so much better. But we'll get another uh, Pig Roach Files in there on Sunday as well. Big ups to all you guys sharing these videos. Thumbing them up. Dropping the comments in there too. Anything like that helps this the agency grow. And it, it's amazing. We are we already are up to like 290 subs almost. So we're at almost 300 agents now at the DIA, and that feels damn good. And I can't thank you enough for being here and enjoying this content that I make. I know it's garbage tier at times, but it's not no my it's not mighty D editing. 
But I, I like it, and I enjoy it, and I appreciate everything that I've got right now. So I can't wait to do more. It, it'll get there. We'll get there together. Um, otherwise, be safe out there, agents, and I will see you later this week. Have a good night.